The true story of a Hollywood legend, Ed Wood. And action! He made movies like no one else. He had an eye for talent. He had a passion for storytelling. And he had a secret he couldn't hide. A. B. N. It's headphones Neil! Headphones Neil here, back with another film review. Um, this is not going to be my review of Titans, just because I'm still working on season two, but I did get a chance to watch the documentary film based on Ed, the director Ed Wood's life titled Ed Wood. Um, I've been meaning to watch that for some time just because um, I'm a pseudo fan of Plan 9 from Outer Space. I know it's schlock, but just the whole concept of it, the potential for what it had, was really good, and I was I was kind of into the lore of how it all came together. So I decided to finally get around to watching the documentary of Ed Wood to get a feel for the director's life and see how they got to that point in making that film. So overall, I think they did a good job as far as um, building up to that point, starting off with his early career as far as being a play director and writer and his ultimate failures at doing so and not really getting much recognition, but having basically what feels like eternal optimism and continuing to push forward no matter what how commercially unsuccessful his works were. And then I also like the continued buildup throughout the film of his um, friendship with Bella Lugosi, the ultimate um, issues that they portrayed, at least in the film, as far as Lugosi having drug abuse issues, running out of money, and all of that. Um, I like that they did have a brief scene where he did acknowledge that he was offered the role of Frankenstein and turned it down, which became the ultimate death knell for his career. So... In reading, and to the end that point, I was reading in the trivia that a lot of the film was accurate and it kind of felt like some of that relationship between um, Ed Wood and Bella Lugosi was played up a little bit too much, that they were really good friends, that Lugosi could call on Wood at any given time. Um, and then also the drug use was kind of weird, um, partly just because I, for me, like on the peripheral of his career, didn't really know that that was a thing. I don't, it's never really come up, so I don't know how accurate that was, or even if it was maybe more overblown than it really was. But in general, I thought that was, that was a good relationship as far as having Lugosi in the film. I like that they acknowledged the um, stand-ins for Lugosi since he had passed in the middle of filming Plan 9 and all of that. So when you watch the film, having Johnny Depp portray Ed Wood was generally a very a good choice and you can kind of see how that translates like if you watched the pirates of the caribbean films then you can see how that kind of retroactive portrayal was a good um portrayal as far as having depth in the film to portray wood um outlandish and eccentric lifestyle so um, that stood out there. Um, and then I guess as a follow up, um, as far as good acting goes, I liked having or seeing Bill Murray in the film. So I liked his portrayal for the transvestite scenes and all of that. Uh, wanting to get the sex change in Mexico and then that ultimately falling through. So um, that was a surprise um, scene there, especially since I didn't know that Bill Murray was in the film to begin with. Um, but as far as the best portrayal, as far as a character that stood out was Tor Johnson, the wrestler. So for the most part, I mean, I wasn't really familiar with how Ed Wood looks. So I was okay with that. And then his his um, original wife, played by Sarah, Sarah Jessica Parker, and then his second wife, played by, I think it was Patricia Arquette, were okay. They were fine in their supporting roles. But then, like, when you see... Bill Murray's character portraying the Eros guy from Plan 9 and then the two police officers were okay. You could, I mean, they were basically playing those parts and they were close enough. But when you see Tor Johnson um, and they put him up in all the makeup and all that, he actually stood out as one of the best comparisons or translations of having an actor retroactively play someone from the past. So 
Um, I was really happy to see that, and I liked his talking style and having him have more lines than what we heard in Plan 9 from Outer Space. So, if anything, that's probably the one standout performance in the Ed Wood film that um, I would recommend paying attention to. So, all in all, a good two hours and six minutes of a film, so definitely worth watching. And then it was all done in black and white, so you definitely get that um, look and feel of old Hollywood, someone trying to rise to the ranks, the insertion of, you know, small time versus big time uh, movie studios and all of that sort of stuff. Um, and then having the film start and I think end as well, but definitely start with the same guy who introed Plan 9 from Outer Space definitely worked. Now, uh, actually, well, starting with the same speech style as Plan 9 from Outer Space, I don't know if it was actually the same guy, but he looked pretty spot on as an older version of the same guy. So. I'm, I actually didn't go back and see if that was the same guy, but I could have sworn he was just an older, slightly more overweight version of the same guy. But I liked having that kind of similar intro redone for the Ed Wood film as we saw in the intro to the Plan 9 film. So overall, um, a lot of good small touches that came together well for the final product, even though it was probably better than any of Ed Wood's, Ed Wood's actual films. Um, the only downside that I kind of had with the ish film, and it's kind of just me t being taken out of the film, was that Johnny Depp sounded a lot like Steve Buscemi doing his um, old man in a kid, like in a high school or college setting when he's like trying to play and say um, cool things to the kids. So when you see or when you listen to Depp's voice, it kind of feels like having that voiceover being done by somebody else. So in general, very strange um, voiceover there. So it took me out of the film. But other than that, there's very little I could say that was uh, negative about it. Um, and then the weird thing too, when as far as musical choices, it was a pretty on par for what you would expect in a documentary film with having uh, musical styles from that era but every time Bella Lugosi was on screen they had the music from the Dracula film on playing slightly in the background so you wouldn't notice it from the first couple of seconds but after a while you would pick up on it it was that same um, music that was kind of at the end of the film or maybe even the beginning so basically it's the Dracula theme but every time Bella Lugosi was on screen regardless of what the scene was and played at slightly different tempos so um, kind of like the sad version, the slightly excited version um, but just having various iterations of that. Um, so that's all there really is for this particular review so if you want a more modern take or a newer take of a similar kind of film style then I would also recommend watching Eddie Murphy in Dolomite is my name. So that was actually, um, I guess, I don't know, I, both of the films had a similar styling, which is why um, I probably liked it. Um, so granted, while Dolomite is my name is more on the, more of the genre of like the black exploitation films, I believe it's called. Um, I thought both films were good because they portray two kind of directors who are making schlocky films but are trying to make it for their big braces they're trying to do the best possible movies they can on the smallest possible budget so like they had a scene where um for example johnny depp is trying to sell the f one of the films to um to raise the money and he's, he makes the analogy of if you're trying to get this movie made on a or with a mo major movie studio it's going to cost you know a million dollars because of um, actors and plot and then overhead like the studio heads and their executive offices and things like that whereas he doesn't have to worry about any of that so the film's only going to cost you know seventy thousand dollars or sixty thousand dollars or eighty thousand dollars or something like that so um Along, things along those lines where the little details in the film work together nicely as they're making the film so definitely a film that I recommend um, watching. So that's all there is for this particular review so if you have any questions, comments, feedback, um, did you like the film, dislike the film about Ed Wood, uh, what are your thoughts on Plan 9 from Outer Space whether it's the original version or the colorized version then 
Um, you can find me on Twitter to let me know at PatelN01. The website is headphonesneal.reviews for past episodes, subscription links, supporting the show, and all of that good stuff. And of course, you can support the show on Patreon at patreon.com slash PatelN01 for upcoming content, bonus stuff, uh, regular, or I was I want to say more irregular, but semi-regular updates on what's coming down the pipeline for um, updates and things like that. And there was one over this past weekend, so by supporting this um, show on Patreon, you get access to stuff like that. And of course, as far as upcoming content, um, watching this Ed Wood film now makes me want to watch I believe it was called Bride of the Atom or something like that. So now I kind of want to watch that, whatever the film with the octopus was, to see how um, that ultimately came together, to see just how schlocky or of a, a bad of a film that was. And do a review to see just my current takes on a film that of that era that was made poorly and along those lines just to have more of a view history of an ed of ed wood films beyond just plan nine from outer space but um that is all for this particular episode so thanks for tuning in and being a supporter and subscriber of the show and until next time